Hi everybody, it is January 4, 2018. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article, The History of Operation Chaos, written by a CIA undercover operative, Vernon Lyon. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I will link below to everything that I'm working off of. So if you want the details, just click on the link below. It's important. It really is important to understand your history. If you don't understand your history, you cannot possibly understand your present. The nightmare that has manifested has roots way back when. And as I'm reading this article, think about, think about the domestic surveillance. Think about the tyranny that has taken over our country. This didn't just start with the internet. It didn't just start with Wi-Fi. It didn't just start with uh, the, this technology that we are now using. It started a very, very long time ago. The domestic surveillance on American citizens, it's been going on for decades. The CIA, with assistance from numerous government agencies, conducted a massive illegal domestic covert operation called Operation Chaos. The CIA spied on thousands of U.S. citizens, every president from Eisenhower to Nixon exploited chaos for their own political ends. When you have a people who speak a good game, speak principles that they do not live, and they are at a level so low, their consciousness at that level, they are ego-driven, self-centered. It may be conscious, it may be unconscious. Most people, it is unconscious. They think they care, they think they're compassionate, they think that they are principled people, but they are not because they have not done any work on themselves to personally just lift themselves up from that low road. So as I'm reading this article, Think about how many people are involved, how many people were involved at this time. That's my coffee pot, if you hear the noise. Think about all of the people who were involved. You know, so many people say, it just couldn't happen because, well, they believe that people are just good. I, um, well, we don't have a lot of good people. I'm sorry. Good people actually live the principles they speak. So, we have an awful lot of people who are all about themselves. And as I read this, well, you tell me if you can hear how people are all about themselves, all about their own success in, in the field that they're working, all about material success, constitution doesn't matter, uh, whether or not they're doing something illegal doesn't matter. If they, they are given permission or told to do something illegal, they will. And yeah, this is going to continue and continue. Look, this nightmare that has manifested has come about because the majority of the American people are of low consciousness. And no, I will not ever stop saying that because that is the crux of the problem. And that goes for an awful lot of people who are quote-unquote awake. And it certainly goes for an awful lot of people who are still choosing willful ignorance. You can only choose willful ignorance if you are so self-centered you don't care about anything but your own comfort. You can continue to be that useless eater who props up this evil system. Yeah, you tell yourself all of these justifications that you're a good person, but Monday through Friday you're showing up supporting the system that you rant and rave about. There's a disconnect there. And until we can work out that disconnect, only darkness is, is going to 
continue. I, it's just going to get darker and darker. But Operation Chaos, um, 1959, Eisenhower used the CIA to sound out exiles who were fleeing Cuba after the triumph of um, Castro's revolution. The CIA sought contacts in the exile community and began to recruit many of them for future use against Castro. Well, Congress, the public, they showed no interest in this. Bingo. Problem. No interest. Why? Because I'm self-centered. I only care about me. Don't bring me anything else. Don't want to talk about anything else. Don't want to do anything about anything else but my own comfort. So the CIA established proprietary companies, fronts and covers for its domestic operation, so widespread that Johnson allowed the CIA director to create in 1964 a new super secret branch called the Domestic Operations Division. The very title uh, just mock the explicit intent of Congress to prohibit CIA operations inside the US. There are still Americans who believe that the CIA does not operate, has no operations in the United States. It is only operating in other countries. No! That has never been the case. The CIA, at that time, it needed a perceived threat. It needed a present, uh, presidential directive, unleashing their dogs. It was the student protest against the war in Vietnam that was the perceived threat to the national security. So Johnson, he relying at that time on Hoover's intelligence. Hoover believed that these protests, the international communists were manipulating the student protests, and that was actually it, that was verified decades later but think about all of the protests you know they could have uh, grassroots a genesis of grassroots springing up but they're so quickly infiltrated and taken over think about the protests in Iran how many countries have we had the CIA uh, start these protests so that we could go in and take over the country this it, it goes on endlessly evidence just continues to mount up more and more people have to suffer the consequences die countries taken over by by the United States or Israel and I believe that that is what has taken place in Iran yeah it may very well be Trump that gets that war going anyway um, so Johnson had ordered the CIA to confirm or to deny Hoover's allegations. So, yeah, that was it. The CIA then began to uh, establish offices and divisions, and the newly created DOD, De uh, Department of Defense, turned to people who had achieved positions of prominence in the business, labor, banking, and academic communities. In the academic arena, the CIA sought their own set of eyes and ears on many major college and university campuses. This uh, Operation Chaos at this time already had like 50 agents operating, infiltrating these protests. Think about Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers, domestic terrorist, founded the uh, Underground Weathermen. And what happened to Bill Ayers? <laughs> Nothing happened to Bill Ayers. When you look at all of these connections, you cannot, well, I guess you can if you're somebody who's truly, I don't know, mentally ill, think that all of these connections have nothing to do with the individuals themselves, that Obama walks on water. He is so CIA. So is Bill Ayers. Bill Ayers hosted fundraisers for Obama. They went to parties together. They had barbecues together. Yeah. Um, Ayers, nonchalant admission that the fundraiser did take place. 
because when Obama was running for president the first time around, he was there were people who were claiming that there was no connection. No, there was a connection. You know, Barack Obama launched his political career in the home of two people who coordinated bombings of the U.S. Capitol, Pentagon, and the New York Police Department headquarters, among other places. Their radical organization also plotted to bomb an army dance at Fort Dix. It failed. Um, Obama and heirs took part in panel discussions that were organized by Michelle Obama. Obama and Ayer served together on the board of the Woods Fund for three years. You can learn about the Woods Fund by just clicking on this video. Um, they worked together. I, I believe that it was Bill Ayer's. Aren't there? Oh God, my memory. Wasn't there speculations that Bill Ayer's actually wrote one of Barack Obama's books? But yeah, all charges against Ayers were dropped and that he spent no time in jail. Ayers openly admits he is guilty as sin but free as a bird. Charges were dropped because federal authorities overstepped their legal bounds in pursuing the weatherman, not because the charges were unfounded. Do you understand, you know, domestic terrorist Bill Ayers, free as a bird, and a professor in a university? How did this happen? It happened because the American people allowed it. But yes, many connections. Bill Ayers, CIA operative, operating during Operation Chaos. So Helms, who was the uh, CIA director under Johnson, He, as the deputy director, he allowed the CIA slowly to expand its domestic intelligence operations and understood his orders from President Johnson were to collect intelligence on college and university campuses with no governing guidelines other than don't get caught. The illegal collection of domestic intelligence had become so large, widespread, that Helms was forced to create a special operations group, the SOG. It was embedded in counterintelligence divisions, a division, um, and provided data on the U.S. peace movement to the Office of Current Intelligence on a regular basis. Campus anti-war protest activity spread across the nation. The CIA reacted by, well, establishing more projects. Project Resistance was designed to provide security to CIA recruiters on college campuses. Under this program, the CIA sought active cooperation from college administrators, campus security, and local police to help identify anti-war activists, political dis dissonance, and radicals. So think about the fusion centers. That was already operating so many decades ago. Project Miramac was to provide warnings about demonstrations being carried out against CIA facilities or personnel in the Washington area. Under both projects, the CIA infiltrated agents into domestic groups of all types and activities. It used its contacts with local police departments and their intelligence units to pick up its police skills and began in earnest to pull off burglaries illegal entries, use of explosives, criminal frame-ups, shared interrogations, and disinformation. CIA teams purchased sophisticated equipment for many starved police departments. Yes, and that's what the Department of Homeland Security began doing right after 9-11, that false flag attack. But what did they get in return for these gifts from our intelligence agencies. They get to see arrest records, suspect, suspect lists, intelligence reports from local police departments. It's like a Stasi network. 
Many large police departments, in conjunction with the CIA, carried out illegal, warrantless searches of private property to provide intelligence for a report requested by Johnson. And later entitled The Restless Youth. Oh my God. The Restless Youth. Protesting a unjust war. Do you see how sick the mentality of our quote-unquote leaders were, have been, still are? You know, think about that we have been operating for our entire lives, voting for the lesser of two evils. Voting for the lesser of two evils. Well, that gets you evil, and we're living it now. So Helms, the director of the CIA in 1968, decided to consolidate all CIA domestic intelligence operations under one program. And yes, that one program was Operation Chaos. Helms began to face pressure from two opposing factions within the CIA. At that time, we still had people who really believed in the Constitution and who fought for it. At that time, they had support from their fellow Americans. Now, you talk about the Constitution, you're laughed at. You talk about principles and you're laughed at. You care about the truth and you're, you're considered a truther, and that word is actually used to, to degrade you because you care about the truth. We have become so sick. So these two opposing factions, one wanted to expand domestic operations even more, and the other was reminding Helm that the Operation Chaos was well over the line of illegality outside the CIA's charter. But of course, expanding Operation Chaos one. It began to include overseas agents to share intelligence with the FBI's intelligence division. Now you no longer had Hoover, but then you had William Sullivan. There were more than 50 chaos agents. And what was their cover? Their cover, radical. Radical. Like Bill Ayers. You know, when it gets so obvious, when you really do understand the history, you, well, then you understand your present. Then you understand how, unless this gets stopped, the freedom that you enjoyed, the opportunities that you had, all going by the wayside, And then you face your fellow Americans who don't care. It's hard to take. And I know that a lot of you identify with me. But so uh, Nixon, he wanted to coordinate and concentrate efforts against domestic dissenters. He created the Interagency Committee on Intelligence, recommended new efforts in black bag operations, wiretapping, mail opening programs. All of this was accepted by the White House. Helms, the director of the CIA, he began to have second thoughts about how large chaos had grown. But Nixon, he wanted it as a presidential tool. CIA's inspector general wrote a report that expressed concern about Operation Chaos. We also encountered general concern over what appeared to be a monitoring of the political views and activities of Americans not known to be or suspected of being involved in espionage, espionage. Stations were asked to report on the whereabouts and activities of prominent persons whose comings and goings were not only in the public domain, but for whom allegations of, of subversion seemed sufficiently nebulous to raise 
renew, renewed doubts as to the nature and legitimacy of the chaos program. But the White House was demanding that Operation Chaos continue. In March 1971, a group of young CIA executives known as the Management Advisory Group protested Operation Chaos and similar domestic operations by issuing a statement saying, MAG, the Management Advisory Group, opposes any agency activity which could be construed as targeted against any person who enjoys the protection of the United States Constitution, whether or not he resides in the United States. That was back in the 70s. We don't have those groups anymore. We have an awful lot of individuals. The CIA was involved in domestic operations using basic Americans, American institutions such as the Peace Corps, the business community, the media. A few years later, the Washington Star reported that over 35 American journalists, some full-time, some freelance, and some major media correspondents were on the CIA payroll. And in, the 19, in uh, 1974, the CIA admitted that over 200 CIA agents were operating overseas, posing as businessmen. The House of Cards collapses. Did it really collapse? No. It just took on new forms. But Watergate collapsed the House of Cards. 1975, the CIA underwent public investigation and scrutiny. By who? Ah, the Church and Rockefeller committees. Investigations revealed considerable evidence showing that the CIA had carried out its activities with a tremendous disregard for law, for the law, both in the United States and abroad. Operation Chaos, the CIA had compiled personality files on over 13,000 individuals, including more than 7,000 U.S. citizens, as well as files on over 1,000 domestic groups. It shared information on more than 300,000 persons within different law enforcement agencies. It had spied on, burglarized, intimidated, misinformed, lied to, deceived, and carried out criminal acts against thousands of citizens of the United States. It had placed itself above the law, above the Constitution, and in contempt of international diplomacy and the United States Congress. It violated its own charter. It had blatant contempt for the rights of individuals. The deceit, the illegality, implored, implored Congress as well as the President to take extreme measures to control the agency's activities. However, except for a few cosmetic changes, nothing happened. Nothing happened. There was renewed domestic operations that began with Ford, who took over when Nixon quit. They were briefly limited by Jimmy Carter. They were extended dramatically by Ronald Reagan. When George Bush Sr. came into office, boom. He renewed the uh, political enemies list. Targeted assassinations. The FBI became more and more corrupt. Infiltration of groups practicing their constitutional right to dissent against U.S. government policies like the war against Nicaragua, the support for the uh, Salvadorian military. So what does this all mean? So clearly this is an article that was written decades ago. The conclusion, it still stands. Power granted to the office of the presidency, the unaccountability of the intelligence agencies, widespread illegal domestic operations. They're as certain today as they were certain then. We as a people should remember history and not repeat it. It is therefore essential that the CIA be reorganized and stripped of its covert operations capability. A great deal is at risk. Our own personal freedoms as well as the viability of the society. The, C the CIA must be put in its place. We will remain vulnerable to these abuses and face the risk of decaying 
into a lawless state destined to, to self-destruction. And we are now living that self-destruction. And it is self-destruction. Self-destruction. And then I was given this, uh, sent this article, Activist Post, Black Ops Agent Claims He Was Paid to Bomb Oklahoma in the 1990s by Deep State. Hours later has a car crash. This is um, Cody Snoggers. Is, is that how you pronounce his name? I'm not sure. But I'm sure a lot of you know about Cody. And he, a uh, black ops contractor, he revealing that the CIA wanted him to be the patsy to blow up the um, the Jesus, I can't think of the building's name. Hello, Carol. The Mueller building. Is it Mueller? No, it's not. I, um, my my brain is truly the Murrow. The Murrow. The Murrow. Jesus. Sorry, guys. Um, this is what Cody said. For over 20 years, I was an independent contractor specializing in sensitive covert assignments as well as bodyguard work. In 1994, I was given the task to blow up the Murrow building in Oklahoma City. This job came from an ex-U.S. military man who told me he worked covertly for CIA. I refused on moral grounds. My strong opposition to attacking U.S. citizens on our own soil changed my status from a CIA asset into a liability, into a liability of private independent contractor who knew too much and then had a near-fatal car accident. Now, if you don't know anything about the Oklahoma city bombing, uh, well, there are so many videos, so many documentaries proving that just like 9-11, Oklahoma was a false flag attack and has so many, it's like the narrative as you read about the Oklahoma City bombing and then you think about 9-11, oh God, we've been living this for so long. We can't, as a people, we can't seem to do anything differently. We just accept lie after lie after lie. Snogris discussed both the Clintons and Bush's involvement in drug trafficking, Iran, Contra, and numerous other corruption by the federal government, including 9-11, in an audio message. You can click on the blue lettering, and it will bring you to um, the interviews with Cody Snoggers. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that name wrong. Oklahoma City bombing. Deep state black intelligence operation. And Terrence Yiki. Yikis? I'm losing it, guys. A policeman who rescued four in the bombing kills himself. This policeman, Sergeant Yiki, his body was found in a field in El Reno, Oklahoma, over a mile away from his abandoned vehicle. There was an extremely large amount of blood found in his vehicle. He was bound, rope burn on his neck, marks on his wrist, wrists, deep cuts, likely tortured and killed, execution style with a single bullet that entered his right temple. No gun was found at the scene until an FBI agent showed up and he found a gun within five minutes. Hey, I got the gun. Here it is. Even though that whole area had been thoroughly searched, his death ruled a suicide. His wife stated that her husband witnessed things during his response to the bombing, which he did not agree with. He didn't agree with the official version of events being put forward by law enforcement and the mainstream media. He began collecting evidence, and then he was brutally murdered. People 
people really get destroyed. Their careers, their reputations, or their entire life brought to an end because of these sick operations conducted by our own government. And until the people wake up, until they they begin to care about what is taking place. More and more people will be murdered. More and more people will have to suffer the consequences like Terrence. I will link below to this documentary.